One of the most challenging things to shoot is a hummingbird. Hummingbirds move really, really fast. Typically, a hummingbird is traveling between 25 and 30 miles an hour. Now, it'll stop and hover, but it makes no sense as it moves around. It can also dive as fast as 60 miles an hour. So you'll see it, and then it'll immediately be gone. Fortunately, when I travel to the park, they had some feeders set up to attract the hummingbirds. They've got a viewing area, making it easy to view and enjoy the hummingbirds. And if you bring a long enough lens, you can actually capture some pretty decent photos. The only drawback about the feeders is that the backgrounds behind it aren't as attractive. Usually people who shoot hummingbirds professionally would create a soft blurred background that they put behind the feeder themselves, so the background goes really soft. You see, the hummingbird moves so much that it's very difficult to shoot with shallow depth of field. So you're going to find yourself balancing out really fast shutter speeds to freeze the motion. And even still, parts of the hummingbird are just going to be blurred. These aren't like eagles or raptors where you can get crisp defined wings as they soar into place. Those beats are really fast. The wings are beating over and over and over again. And even if you have a perfectly sharp photo, don't be surprised that the wings are a blur. Now, as you're doing the shooting, I would recommend you get a fast shutter speed and you boost your ISO. You're going to want to make sure that you've tested your camera and are shooting at an ISO which you're comfortable with to pull down the noise reduction. Additionally, use an aperture that gives you a reasonable depth of field. Even though that hummingbird may be in the frame, it can easily move this far in and out as it's feeding. In fact, it'll move more, but that's about the only part you'll be able to capture. Rarely will the bird sit still so you can actually shoot it. Now, I found that I was shooting hundreds of photos to get a good one. I am not very experienced with hummingbird shooting. I talked to my good friend Scott Bourne who has shot them before and got some tips and let me pass a few of those on to you. Always shoot raw. The latitude you have for sharpening as well as exposure adjustments is going to be handy. Better to shoot a little bit underexposed and get a faster shutter speed than to have to really open things up and slow it down to get a better exposure. With that RAW file, you'll be able to recover a slightly underexposed image, and you'll have a better chance of having a crisp, well-defined image because of the shorter shutter speed. Use a high megapixel count camera. For this, I went up to the D800 that I had with me at that time, and this camera shoots a very large file because chances are you're not going to fill the frame. You're going to have to shoot pretty loose because that bird moves around so much. And in post-production, you'll be able to go in and crop that photo a bit tighter. Additionally, you should remain still and shoot from a bit further away. Hummingbirds are fairly skittish birds. Look how small they are and how fast they move. If you're too close to them or you're moving around a lot, they're not going to come anywhere near you even if there is food attracting them, the sugar water or the nectar. So be still and try to be unobtrusive. Use a longer lens and just keep firing away. Frame up your shot and when the bird gets close, I'm not even looking through the viewfinder. I've already set the shot, put everything back down to manual, turned off autofocus. Focus on the feeder and have the camera ready to go. When the bird comes into play, fire away the shots. Just tap it and keep going. Get as many shots as you can. Then, when you think you got it, after you've shot a couple hundred perhaps, review your images and see where you're at. This is all about quantity. If you shoot the frame loose enough and you get it well enough composed and you have the camera settings right, like I shared with you, you will get some keepers and a whole lot that aren't worth keeping as well. All right, now that we've got an idea on how to shoot it, Let's walk through and actually develop one, and I'll share some strategies to bring that image out from the raw photo into something that looks a heck of a lot better.